Okay, my friends, as all of you know that have been following me, I study the mud fossils, which I discovered were preserved because of fascia. Now, what is fascia? We're going to talk about that in a second. Flesh-eating bacteria is surging in Japan, they say. And here is what you should know. Now, I have some things to add to what you should know. So let's see what we should know and try to figure it out. Okay, so don't forget, I'm, I'm the fascia guy. And flesh-eating bacteria known as necrotizing fasciitis, that's the fascia, often starts by infecting the fascia, the thin membrane that covers muscles and everything in your body. The fascia is made up of connective tissue bands surround muscles, nerves, fat, organs, everything. It's your skin, the whole nine yards. The bacteria can enter the body through breaks in the skin or mucous membranes, such as bug bites or small cuts. Once inside, the bacteria can spread quickly and infect fascia damaging nearby tissues. Well, it's not, not only bug bites and small cuts and so forth. It can invade your membranes because of the junctions in your membranes and literally holes in your membranes. All right, they're going to tell say what fascia is according to AI. Well, as I showed you, the DNA tested human lung flat as a pancake, I say came from the Great Flood, and, and um, Yale says, yes, there was a worldwide event that caused this. Here it is right here. It's strata worldwide. This is the, these earliest fossils, which are mine, are the earliest fossils ever done, they say, before there was any bones or teeth or shells, no. They said they were all soft-bodied. No, not true at all. They boiled away, which created a red bed of the flesh. Literally, the red mud is the flesh that boiled off the bodies. Then after that, the gray clay piled up on that, on top, which is the, the bony parts that, that dissolved, and probably some trees, and you know, that organic matter that that wasn't like um, fleshy things um, coated with collagen. Collagen was a preservative, and I understand why. And it's got to do with the phospholipids. The P is the phosphorus. Well, all feldspar, and all of these are coated with feldspar, are aluminum silicates. A feldspar, 100% is aluminum silicates. This is all aluminum silicates coated. So is Caesar, because he's coated with collagens too. The phosphorus of the collagen boiled down to the aluminum silicates. And, they, and this was all because of a great flood that was hot water caused by an almost impact of a giant comet that almost hit Earth. Now, I'm going to leave it at that and get back to the biology of the body. But what I have just shown you is that there's a ton of different fascia in your body. These bones have the tiniest little thin slip around them because they don't they don't need to slide around in it and everything. Tendons, they have what's called a slurpy, a small leucine rich protein. As a matter of fact, let me show you something. Okay, so deadly flesh eating bacteria spreading in Japan, surging they say. Now, you may have heard reports in recent days of a flesh eating bacteria spreading in Japan referring to an illness that can occur with streptococcal toxic shock syndrome, STSS, streptococcal toxic shock membrane. So toxic shock, you just whack your body so bad that you die, basically. Streptococcal, what's that all about? Media reports indicate the country has seen more than a thousand cases of this in the first six months, more than a total of all of 2023. However, these cases have not yet been published in peer-reviewed journals, so reports may not be entirely accurate. So they really don't know what's going on, but they know there is more of this than normal. Now, it's caused by streptococcus, that's the streptococcal part. Strep A, right? streptococcus A, we're going to talk about this in a minute. These bacteria are common, they're everywhere, they're quite common. 
but certain strains can cause more serious illness called invasive group A streptococcal disease. Now I'd like to see if they can actually determine that this invasive group A is genetically different than the strep A, just a normal A. Because they're talking about the same bacteria basically, but they're saying some of them are more invasive. Why are they more invasive? Are are the bacteria themselves more invasive or is the body that it's going into more prone to invasion? That's what I think has happened. I could be wrong, but I'd like to see the, the chemistry of these, this invasive group versus the non-invasive common group, if there is a difference. All right, here's the, the story with strep A. Everybody's got it, basically. Only some people get invaded by it, and that's called invasive. It's the same bacteria. There's no difference. It's just some people become easily invaded, and others don't get invaded at all. That's the question. Why? Okay, so we know we have necrotizing fasciitis caused by group A streptococcus, which is is this this bacteria now so we have group a strep what exactly is group a strep what is invasive group a strep how common is invasive group a how are group a streptococci spread what does invasive group a streptococcal disease occur why does it occur who is most at risk what are the early signs? Now, what this goes on and on here about this particular disease, flesh-eating bacteria. Now, I want to first show you something that I wrote about this particular fasciitis, fascia, long, well, 10 years ago. Okay, this is a paper I wrote back in uh, 2015, and this is after about five years of research about the fascia fascia which facilitated the fossilization of these creatures so i was really deep into the fascia i i contacted everybody germany everywhere the only ones that knew anything about it was people in germany now it's a coating on every fiber of your entire cellular structure every cell has a membrane on it which is basically fascia it is the web of life in ancient times it was called tunica like a cloak that covered everything fascia has a job to do it protects and separates every tissue and it does it well during your lifetime guess what if you die and are buried quickly and stay wet and compacted in fine mud the fascia does not even know you're dead <laughs> And it keeps protecting you. That's what caused all my mud fossils to be saved, like these bones and so forth, because of the membrane on them. In these particular conditions, which cause the fascia-facilitated fossilization, mud fossils. Now, listen to this carefully. This was my words. The fascia separates every cell and structure from its neighbor in life and in death. So, it's a protective membrane. Fascia protects every bit of you from invasion including a complete fabric bag that is your skin that's not the modern fascia too your skin is not just one fabric either you have tough skin and fine skin and even be in between all fascia all fascia is made of collagens and carrageens which are dense with phosphorus all right, this is something I figured out. I figured out the silicon, too. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. As fascia is made of collagens and carrageens, the fabric creating fiber and elastins in sheets that wraps everything individually and then comes together in one giant system. It's a fluid-filled highway. There's over 20, or I think there's 28 types of collagens and carrageens. Some protect from acids, others from caustics, others from mineralization, or, or others mineralize and, and give you strength, your bones, tendons, all that. And the variety is amazing. The fibers are infused with silicon. Now, tissue in your body are varied and many. Some vascular tubing is completely impenetrable. You just can't get into it. And connective tissues are highly mineralized connective tissues. Skin has 50 times as much silicon in it as other tissues. 
Now, this the skin in the um, mud fossils is really dense. It's like silicon on steroids. All right. So then anyway, I go on about all the different story about the faster facilitator. But it, the key here is that somewhere down here, I call it a fluid-filled highway. Here it is right here. Fascist tubular fluid-filled fabric network. All right, now this goes back to 2015. And, and at that point, I realized about the fascia. And then I, it started to make sense to me about the invasive diseases. Every single one of them invades. They all invade. Well, how do they invade? Through the fascia. Okay, and you all know that I never give any medical advice. No, I do not do that. I am a researcher. And this is research from the National Library of Medicine about this strep A. It's, it's all the same. There is no difference in the strep A. It's just how you react to it. It says it's a major human-specific bacteria pathogen that causes a wide array of manifestations. So some people get it and hardly anything happens. Some people get it and they die. It says they range from mild localized infections, red and sore and pussy and so forth, to life-threatening invasive infections, which you die from. Ineffective treatment of S. pyrogenesis infection can result in a post-infectious sequela acute rheum rheumatic fever and post-streptococcal blah, 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 blah. Moreover, it causes invasive infections like necrotizing fasciitis. That's the fascia. Necrotizing, it kills it, eats it, because it's, there's, there's no way for it to fight back. The toxic shock syndrome is associated with a high morbidity and mortality. That's what you die from, is the sepsis. Now, I went and had my mud fossils DNA tested and CAT scanned and everything else. And they were from a great flood. They're flat as a pancake on one side. And everything, I, I know the process, what happened here. And here's what Yale had to say about it. This is a year later. Yale published this paper. Exceptional preservation of soft body, they named it and promoted by silica rich oceans just like i told you the silica and it's they say they were all soft body there was no bones that's just not true they just don't get it right and i talked to this is the guy i work with well i didn't work with him i try to show him all my stuff total rejection but they're saying that this this these creatures which is all the stuff i'm showing here even to to the foot of what looks like a human. I mean, it has, it has the the um, tibia spot right there with a cradle for it, and it has the fibula which would sit right here. <laughs> it looks like a shoe, but it's not. It even has like a sole-looking thing, and, and I'm sure this is the fascia that coated it. Now that's not that that's not skin, but this is some kind of a a foot of a creature that was here when this great flood happened. And they all died in a certain way. And this one, I'm sure, died flat like that. You see how flat that is? This is a goose or a waterfowl of some nature. And there it is, his feathers on his head. Right? You can see the feather pattern right there on his head. Now, and he died flat on the paper like that too. Same thing. All my stuff did. I think I showed you this. The, 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 uh, this DNA tested, CAT scan, everything. I mean, it's as flat as flat can get. And it had to be in the body of the creature that it was in, which was a human, because it it's DNA tested human. And it's just saturated with blood coming out of here. And I don't take it from the surface. I go inside. I drill, you, I drill a hole in deep. And then you clean that out. And then you drill again. That's what you use. And it's, it's just saturated with blood. It's a lung. You see that pocket right there? That's where the heart sits. This is a left human lung. And this heart is, sits right in there. So it had to die like this with the heart attached. And the whole creature boiled during these flood times. 
I'm sorry to get so deep into this, but this I, I see the opportunity to speak about it, and here it is. So these are exactly what Yale agrees. These are perfectly, here it is right here. The, these, what they call Etacara biota, it's all it means is soft-bodied creatures. And they're saying it's Earth's earliest fossilized creatures occurs in a terminal layer worldwide. That's the Triassic. Red bed, gray clay, black cap. I'll explain that in one minute. Then they say how the fossils preserved so well remains controversial. Exceptional preservation. Now this, I presented all this stuff, like I said, to Derek Briggs, but it, it didn't go anywhere. But NASA funded all this, so they wrote a paper on it and claimed that they had figured it out, which I, as you saw, my paper goes back a year earlier and is, is, it says basically the identical same thing. And this was, I say, how is this possible? They all said the same thing. When I try to explain, I feel like a doctor with a patient has glazed eyes. You know, they just, nobody knows about the fascia, first of all. At that point, nobody did know about the fascia. It was just something that they, I, I'm not kidding you. I swear this is a fact. I got a hold of the guy that was talking about fascia and because of connective tissue issues where sports injuries and things. And I said to him, I said, look, here's what I found is this layer in there. Can you explain this? And he said, no, it's just a layer of fuzz, they called it. But it, well, let me just show you the paper they have. All right, so here it is right here. Meet your interstitium, a newfound organ, which is this fluid-filled highway that I just described in my paper. I said it was a fluid-filled network, and it is. This was in 2018. Somebody wrote a paper. I know who it was. They wrote a paper, and they had a hard time getting it published, but they finally did publish it. And now they consider this to be a new organ, which is this layer right here. I'll explain that layer in a second. But this, it, it, this was when they announced it as a new organ. Now, my paper talks about this interstitium layer right here and this fluid-filled highway, the whole, this whole area, membranes in, specifically. But the fascia is right in here. This is the coating. The membrane that separates you from where your skin is up here. All right? This is your skin, let's say. But it's, it could be the coating of your a lung, or your kidney, or your liver, or your heart, or your muscles, or your tendons. Every single thing in your body that is a different thing than the thing that is next to has a membrane between it. They both have them. That membrane is the protection for this layer. If you get through this layer, that's not a big deal. Because these guys will kill you. You might get a little pus and it's sort of sore and, and, you know, it's going to, that type of thing, you know, an infection a little bit. But if it gets down in here, you're going to have to send a lot of troops in. And they can kill it. You can get a deep wound and, and still kill all that bacteria and get it out of you. Because you've got a lot of interstitial fluids, which is nothing more than lymph. This is basically the lymph system in your body. They call it anything they want, but that's where the lymph fluid primarily flows. And within that lymph fluid is all enzymes, bacteria, and all that stuff patrolling and living in this layer underneath, which is your membrane. Now, these are the little tiny balls, and I talk about those in my my mud fossils as well because they, they're everywhere nobody knows what to do about them or how they got there can you see those little balls you see down there see them all they're everywhere this is a real picture this is not an artist's rendition this is some probably immediately at an autopsy because here's the problem they didn't realize this was here and the reason they didn't realize that layer was there is by the time they came in to autopsy these people, the fluid had drained out of that layer and it went flat like a pancake. And they thought it was a thick film. But no, it's a fluid-filled highway. I could see it easily because my stuff is, is 
is flawless. It's exceptionally preserved. I can see every little detail. I can see the, this layer. I can see everything. I can see all the little tendons and the muscle fibers and 100% of it. And it's because of the mud fossilization process, which I described back in my paper, the fascia facilitated fossilization. All right, don't forget, this is the chemistry. It's all made of collagens, which are in the phospholipid area. Now, it creates a fibers and elastins in sheets that wrap everything individually and come together as one giant system. That's from my paper, 2015. See this? Remember they said high silicates? 50 times the silicon was in this, the, the skin areas, which is the fascia, basically. Uh, and here it is. The fascia is a tubular, fluid-filled fabric network. So this, and, and really, at the time I was doing this, nobody knew anything about fascia, absolutely nothing. They called it fuzz. They said it was just there like packing material and it had no function other than it. So they just, he, I'm not kidding you. They, he told me that they used to just take it and when they cut it out, they just throw it away. It was like it didn't mean anything. It was just packing material. I got, I got it in here somewhere that nobody knew anything about it. Hold on a second. Oh, look at this. This is the other thing. I forgot all about this. I said... The investment sites where the fascia, like that's fascia right there, and that's one of these tags that hold this fascia in. These are acupuncture points. You see, the investment sites correspond to ancient acupuncture points quite closely. So, to me, it's now suspected fascia. Connective tissues may be fiber optic. That's what I put in. But there, you, it communicates. Your whole body has to communicate with everything somehow. I mean, I know nerves run a lot of nerves, but the fascia touches every single thing there is. Fascia is the fluid-filled highway. It touches literally every cell in your body. Not, not necessarily the fascia, but the, the, the lymph. It's everywhere. And the lymph primarily runs through the, the fascia, which is a fluid-filled highway, and then it spreads off from there. Yeah, see, here it is right here. Fascia was thought to be mere packing material, virtually inert. It had no, nothing to do. It has long been ignored as a subject of research. Now, recently, however, there has been new equipment that allows viewing of the fascia as it does its job. You can actually see the the bacteria and so forth. Once again, as in many experiments, totally unexpected results. And then I put down, it's just a tube, fluid-filled fabric network. All right, and your bacteria run through there, all the enzymes collect in there, they, they distribute them to the rib, which are ribosomes, they distribute them out to the cells. But anyway, this, this paper goes back to uh, 2015 and, and it covers everything. It is still it's quite valid right now. I've made some other discoveries since then. Well, maybe I'll, they'll come up as we go along here, but this, you know, we ta need to understand the basic cellular network that's in your body to understand how it gets invaded because the fascia protects you from the invasion. That's why I'm getting so deep in this fascia. All right, before too quick, we're going to get deep into this paper I did in 2015 on fascia-facilitated fossilization. You see that? That's a mud fossil right there. This is a tendon, a splayed-out tendon. These are the abrupt transitions, one right there, one right here, and then it starts to break and become mineralized into muscle. These little edges around here, you see these? See those little slurpees? And that's what they are. But this isn't a fossil. All, right? all the little white spots are connective tissues, and they're, they're, just, they're everywhere in, in tendons. They're just everywhere. As they come over here into the muscle, you still have a bunch of them, but it gets less and less as it goes out and becomes more muscle. But here, you still have a lot of them right at these 
abrupt transitions. And when you come way back here, it's just saturated with them. They're, they're everywhere. But this is what these, and this is a blood vessel right here, a little tiny blood vessel. You see, you don't need much blood for tendons, but you still need some. But it's certainly not like muscle. So you got some blood there. You got your slurpees. You got your abrupt transition. You got your tendon. And this is all in mud fossils. So this is why I know so much about the fashion. Nobody knew, nobody knew anything about this. The only people who knew anything really about it was people in Germany because of looking into sports injuries and how these these things get ripped apart and torn but that now we're looking at it is how does this protect you because there's this blood flow in a, what they call extracellular matrix blood flowing through your body everywhere fluids not necessarily always blood but it's fluids of one nature or another and they're all over this thing they're saturated everywhere that's how you get your oxygen is allowed in through these these mem these are membranes but these also have to slurp around and move so you've got different attachments you got loose junctions you got tight junctions so there's, there's there's a lot to understand here in addition to the chemistry the anatomy and so forth because we're going to be talking about invasion into that how does it get in there well if it broke right here well you get into whatever's under underneath this because that's going to be saturated covered with with um, fascia the fascia is pretty much gone you can see the slurpees but that's about it all right first of all let's talk about how a membrane is supposed to work and what does a membrane actually do all cells, every cell in your body, even red blood cells and cells of every type, have a plasma membrane, which is this. This is a phospholipid bilayer, two layers. Phospho, phosphorus, phospho, phospho, fatty lipids in between. Now, what does a cell do? I mean, what does a membrane do? This membrane surrounds the cell. Well, it also surrounds body parts like bones because it's part of the membrane of the whole membrane that surrounds it and it's all made out of this bilipid layers so what is its role can molecules enter and leave the cell yes they can can anything or everything enter or leave no it cannot so what determines what can go in and out is it the nucleus or the DNA or the plasma membrane well it's got a lot to do with the chemistry and the charges that are on the particles first of all I don't think I showed you this yet but this is what AI says it's a continuous layer fascia is a continuous layer of stringy connective tissue surrounds and supports every structure in the body including muscles organs bones joints ligaments tendons nerves every, every everything everything even even cells I showed you fascia which is nothing more than the membranes fascia is flexible and moves with the body it can be thick in the center known as a ponderosis. That's just not true, that's backwards. If it's thick in the center, it's a rope-like. A ponderosis is a sheet-like. I'll show you that in a second. So this is not correct. AI, you got it wrong, buddy. It says it can be thick in the center, known as a ponderosis, and thin along the sides. A ponderosis is thin along the sides. All right. Fascia is made up of three parts, medial, lateral, and central. Let me show you what fascia is like. All right, I'm just, this is not to do with being infected or anything, but this just shows you it's not correct. This is what a ponderosis tendon is. It's these little flat, thin sheets that are on here and on your back and so forth. They're not the rope-like. Here's the difference. Tendon versus a ponderosis. Tendon whitish connective tissue, long, tough, and cord-like, thick in the center, rope-like, tough. A ponderosis is a connective tissue which is delicate, sheet-like, thin sheets, delicate, so forth. But it's, it gives your body that 
the way to you know do all that kind of stuff in your abdomen and your back and everything however listen to this this is I, this was just blew me away when i found this we're talking about tendon and it has to slide i think i talked about the slurpee small leucine rich proteins hold on a second all right this blew me away i i knew about the slurpees which is this small leucine rich protoglycan slurpees biologically active components in the extracellular matrix in other words everything slides around through this goo it consists of a protein core with leucine rich repeating motifs covalently linked to glyco blah, 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 side chains now so i'm looking at something i forget what it was i was looking for but on the other side of this there's all the all the different little scientific things <laughs> it's, it's just all kinds of stuff so I'm looking for coefficient of friction I forget why and I'm looking down at all how things get more and more slippery and ice on ice is 0.1 and 0.03 this is static and kinetic kinetic means you, is you're moving it, you're pulling it along and static means it's basically sitting I don't know why they give it a friction but anyway ice on ice let's go with the kinetic 0.03 teflon on teflon is 0.04 synovial joints which is this stuff here this is what they're talking about synovial fluids 0.003 the closest is 0.04 which is teflon on teflon this is 0.003 it's much more fluidy the Teflon on Teflon, the coefficient of friction. It's got all kinds of stuff. It's very cool. Just this one little thing, you could do a lot with that. Anyway, um, small, these are the slurpees. And, the, and this is what happens when people get inflexible. Their slurpees get gooey. You have to keep them moving. You have to keep them moving. You don't keep them moving, they sort of lock up on you. That's what happens. And I know that for a fact, because it happened to me. Okay, by now, I would think you have a pretty good understanding of what fascia is. And this is it right here. And this is the fluid-filled highway that sends the troops and the enzymes and the ribosomes out through this highway to attack invaders that's what it's here for this is your immune system and it is everywhere it's on every single thing every single organ every single cell so what we want to look at is what happens in here what if this isn't working right why first of all isn't it working right and secondly can we do anything well i don't want to talk about doing anything about it because i i'm not a doctor i but i'm going to tell you there you have to protect yourself by keeping this membrane intact well let me see, show you what the research indicates at this point okay so we know that is a bilipid membrane phosphorus phosphorus fatty stuff now this is actually what it looks like going through the body or wrapping around every single thing in your body i showed you the difference between a ponderosis and a rope like and this is the ponderosis is the flat sheets and the rope like the ones that run like you know to pull against your arm and all that sort of stuff and i showed you the slurpy layers in here and the abrupt transitions now let's talk about cancer and in all invasive diseases because this streptococcus a all it does is invade you and it's, 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 it takes over very, very fast because, in my opinion, there is nothing there to prevent it from coming in, which is the enzymes created by the bacteria. And what is an enzyme? An enzyme is that right there. And that sucker is so specific. It, that's why your, your body creates antibody um, particles that, that kill invaders. And they're, these, they're like this. They're that complicated. And those are just like you're getting, um, you know, uh, a var immunity. This is like immunity. All right. So if you've got this in here in your in your fluid-filled highway, you're going to be okay. The thing that comes in that wants to get through that fluid-filled highway, this has a chemical signature on it. All right. And I'm going to show you how this thing works. 
ribosome, first of all, it comes down as a ball, a ribosome. And then when that ribosome opens up, you end up with this. And all of that is molecular signature. And it is an enzyme at this point, which an enzyme does, it, it doesn't even break down. It goes around and finds things that match up this, this molecular configuration. And it just goes bing, 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 and kills them all. Instantaneously. I mean, instantaneously, it's like electric shock treatment. Boop, 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 boop. And it just keeps going on and doing that all day long. It doesn't even go away. It's, it just stays active until it's no longer needed. And I guess it, at that point, at some point, it dissolves or whatever. But that's an enzyme. Now, where did that enzyme come from? Well, here's where it came from. These little balls. And I said, the ball comes down, and it's wrapped up in a sheath. And when it finds its target, it tickles the little hairs on here. The chemistry on the on the ball. Something tickles it and says, "Hey, I'm the bad guy." And it says, "Oh yeah, how about this?" It opens up and it comes out and it whacks that bad guy. Or the other thing, the same thing happens with these ribosomes. They can open up and be proteins. Well, the difference between an enzyme here and a protein here is that this is a building block. It makes bones and teeth and all that stuff and this destroys things and kills things two sides of a coin but they all come in in this little ball and where did that ball come from well that ball came from this guy right here which is a bacteria and how many species of bacteria do you think there is that live in your body. How many do you think? And how much bacteria do you think is in your body compared to the number of cells that your body has? Na, 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 na. All right, you got to figure it out. All right, here it is. The number of bacteria cells in your body is more than the number of cells in your body that are your cells or my cells. There's more bacteria in you than there is you in you. All right, take that in for a second. And these things, there is so many different species. And what does a species mean? What does that mean? A species means it has a different DNA signature. You see that? That's the DNA of the bacteria. Just like we have a DNA. It says you're going to have five fingers and toes and two eyeballs and da 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 da, da. This thing says, I'm going to have these little hairs. I'm going to have a flagella. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have that. But I am also programmed to make these little tiny balls, which are ribosomes. All right, ribosomes are these little balls, the ones I showed you before, that when they get tickled, they pop out like this and they destroy whatever tickled them. But it's all magnetic, it's all, it's, it's all about the program. And what program, Roger? Well, this program right here. This is how the whole thing works. Let's just start with the bacteria creating the ribosome here. It has its own DNA, it knows what to do, and it says, I'm gonna make that particular ribosome every single time. It comes out, which is nothing more than a chain of these particles, and it literally is a magnetic chain of particles, just like that. And every one of these colors means it's a different amino acid. There's 20 of them. So if, if you've got a blue and a green and a red and an orange and going down, and they have to be exactly in the same sequence, and then they program a messenger RNA strand, which is a single strand. And this is in a program, and it happens in what I, they call transferase. It's a, a, an enzyme. You have to have these enzymes. Enzymes are only produced by bacteria. So this is where we're going to, is the bacterial... Um, involvement here. So if you don't have the bacteria that makes transferase, you're not going to be able to create whatever it is here. And there might be a specific bacteria that creates transferase for some specific enzyme. I don't know. These are things nobody knows. But you do need to know that if you don't create these mRNA strands, you won't be able to program your own DNA. Because these are what make you you um, immune to things. Now, what they do with the vaccines is they make these different codes in these messenger RNAs, 
which is just like your body would do. So if they get it right and everything's fine, that code will come in here and attach to your own DNA with another enzyme breaking open the DNA. See that cloud? It broke open that DNA. So now this mRNA, this mRNA, mRNA, messenger RNA, can jump in here and then your DNA will say, hey, if, if we see this kind of particle coming in here, we're going to become immune. Now, I got to think it's going to take a while for you to set up all your back, because you, every, every um, cell in your body has DNA in it. Every single cell has the DNA. So this, if this is new, and getting injected to just here and there, does it go throughout the body instantaneously, bazillions of them? For a natural immunity to take effect, I would think this would take a while. You, you may get some of them programmed, but you know, it's got to spread. How fast does it spread? I don't know. But a vaccine, I mean, they're flushing you with it, so it goes pretty quick through you. I get all my vaccines, so don't talk to me about not getting vaccines. You know, you, you, anyway, I'm not going to talk about that because I don't give any medical advice. So, but that's the way a vaccine works. It goes and splits into your DNA and changes your DNA. It, that's true. That's how they work. Uh, now, here's the problem. When we're talking about invasive diseases, superbugs, what's happening now is flesh-eating bacteria is nothing more than bacteria that starts... You know that? They got this backwards. Okay, this is called, your textbooks are wrong. This is what cells actually look like. Now, my paper was 2015, and I referred to some new techniques that they could see these events occurring. But this is only four years ago, so um, I can't remember how I came up with that. But anyway, it, it, it's very true. Watch, this is Gokal is his name. He's from UC Berkeley. And this is Seeker channel here. They got five million subscribers all right now he's going to be talking about the first time he saw the interstitium and saw the bacteria working in the interstitium now before we get into it i want you to remember these two things there's two types that they found one of them sniffs around for invaders and one of them does the work Right? And it runs around with all this little, he calls it food in its belly, but I, I say they're ribosomes, these little round balls. And they carry them out to wherever they need to be delivered to. And they move fast. All right, This is real time stuff. This is just actually watching this happen. Now, let me turn it up. So you should be able to hear go call. Here we go. I still remember the moment. It's something that I will never forget. The hair on my hands just stood up. It's a microscopic universe within each cell. This is an unprecedented view of the cellular world, where we can actually see immune cells scooping up sugars in the ear of a zebrafish in real time. Focusing only on the crawling immune cells, we've noticed two classes of them. One team was not hungry at all, but it was very active in terms of trying to figure out, you know, what the environment is. There was another one that was kind of slouching around with a lot of food in its belly. We can actually conceptualize and visualize and analyze the contents of each of these cellular compartments in this crawling immune cell as it's kind of, you know, scooping up its environment. All right, some. let me show you something. This is an un all right, this, I believe, was that dark layer right below the fluid-filled highway. And these are channels going out from these cellular layers out into the fluid-filled highway. This down here is that interstitium layer that has all the balls with straps. All right, that's the way I'm seeing this. Now, watch what happens with this. So, anyways, this is that bilipid layer. Now, watch what happens as... The um, well, anyway, unprecedented watch. view of the cellular world. Where all right now, this is an unprecedented view. Yes, this is the fluid filled highway, 
This, I believe, is a bacteria, and it, you can actually see the flagella. Hold on. I mean, I'm going to stop it slow here. Cellular world. All right. Did you see it? That's the flagella. Where we can actually see, see it. The now, all of these balls, I believe, are ribosomes, and they're all over in here. They're everywhere, and it says, "Hey, there's a guy invading us." I'm coming around, get all the balls ready to go, and he comes around, scoops them up. They say it's food in its belly. I say it's ribosomes. Now watch. Because they never saw this before. Scooping up sugars in the ear of a zebrafish in real... Look, it's gobbled up a whole batch of this blue stuff. That's not figuring out sugars. This is an immune cell. The sugar, what, what sugar is doing in an immune cell? These are immune ribosomes. It's getting a bunch of them to bring them out to attack. And they, they come out with scads of these. But you have to have the bacteria to make the ribosomes. It really, it's not, not a hard concept to understand. And out it goes. Real time. Oof. Focusing only on the crawling immune cells, we've noticed two classes of them. One team was not hungry at all, but it was very active in terms of trying to figure out, you know. All right. He's, he says it's not hungry at all, so it's, it's, it's a messenger. It's a messenger, and it's going on and around like this, and when it sees something that has another chemical attraction to it, you know, it comes back and it reports to the, somehow it sends a signal. I don't know how it does it. I think it might send it through the lymph fluids, like a communication network through there. So somehow this tells the other bacteria it's time to do something. What the environment is. There's another one. That would All right. So that one told this one, go get a bunch of these blue guys and don't do, leave the green guys alone. You know. I mean, there's, all these cells make different back, bacteria make different ribosomes, and there's literally probably hundred thousand maybe different bacteria strains that are making different products. All this is is a chemistry set, and that chemistry set goes out gets delivered to where it's needed. If it's down in your stomach because you just ate steak or something, well, and you need to get some fats going and proteins broken down or whatever it is, it comes up and it gets the right guys. Mostly they're living right around your guts. That's where you're, and that's why they're always, you always got abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, you know, abdominal issues, nausea, it's always related to that when you get sick, basically, almost always. And that's what the research indicates. Again, just talking about what the research says. So what my feeling is, if you don't have the correct bacteria to make these exact ribosomes, you are not going to get this guy to get anything. He's going to come in here and say, where's all the blue guys? They're wrong. Don't have any. So he says, well, why not? What happened? He said, well, the bacteria that used to make those guys is dead. He said, well, what happened to them? And then the other guy said, well, we're not sure. But he might have been, you know, we, we know there was a bunch of lead floating around. You know, there was all kinds of this or that. They, somebody, they ate something really bad and it had some really nasty bacteria. It was attacking like crazy. We, we thought we had it under control. Maybe it killed them. We don't know. Or maybe, who knows? But the bacteria is not there. It's not there. We can't help you. So this guy said, well, what am I going to do? Nothing he can do. So back down to where you're being invaded, you end up getting invaded. And there's nothing you can do about it. Right through there. Because you don't have the guys to mount the attack. All right. So what happens next? This is what happens. It breaks through the cell walls and start to grow inside. And then they grow over here and grow over here. Now, they, there's two ways to look at this. This is the membrane. The fluid-filled highway is in here. Now, I say that fluid-filled highway primarily is out here to keep you from getting invaded through this way. But you're going to have one going that way, too, because this is a two-way street. You got all kind of nasty stuff coming through here, who knows what. And 
your body though has to be protected out here so did the invasion start here and go that way or did the invasion start here and break in this way who knows because you have to have that layer protected just as well as you have to have the inside layer so you need a lot of pro bacteria in your gut otherwise they, you start to get these these growths and um they're having this happen. This is about an infant. This is a cancer of the colon rises in the youth. They're getting, because they're, the, the, the immunity factors, that they're not getting into their body. They're not getting enough pro-bacteria, the good bacteria, living in their body for some reason. Now there's all kinds of people saying all kinds of things. I'm not going to get in the middle of any controversy. I'm just saying, if you don't have the right bacteria in and living in here, you're not going to be healthy. Now, what controls the bacteria living in there? Well, there's a lot of things. Anything that's an antibiotic means it kills bacteria. Now, there's a lot of things. There's all kind of nasty things in the environment that are antibacterial. They will kill you the things if they get in you. You know, if you eat weed killer or something like that, obviously it's going to kill the bacteria. And, and there's a lot of things that kill plants. And what's living in here is almost like plant life. It's bacteria. It's bacteria. You look at it, it's like scum on a pond. <laughs> but you need this stuff, that scum. If you don't have it, you're in trouble. But if you get too much of the bad stuff, you're in real trouble. If you get too much of the good stuff, it might hurt you, but you're better off to have too much of the good stuff than too much of the bad stuff. Usually they're going to bounce each other around. The strep A, everybody has it. you got it in you right now. I'm almost certain. Okay, here's what the research says. Not everyone has strep A in them, but many people carry it in their throats, on their skin, without ever getting sick. Strep A, also known as Group A Streptococcus, this pyogenes is a common bacteria. It can cause a range of infections in people of all ages and health. Primarily, it's the young and the old. But it can cause infections in people of all ages and health. Can you know in, in what whatever condition they're in. However, it doesn't always lead to illness. Well, why do some people get sick and others don't? I, that's what I always look for. What's the difference? What makes me healthy and you sick, or vice versa? You know, how rapid can deaths happen? My father-in-law died almost overnight because of sepsis. And that's what causes it, is this Streptococcus A, I believe. All right, trying to learn about the fascia and the immune system layer and the enzymes and the bacteria sort of brings it out of focus. Let's get back to what the whole thing is about. Flesh-eating bacteria. All right? That's what this whole thing is about, is flesh-eating bacteria, which is this bacteria right here. Streptococcal infection, group A strep. Now, this has just been updated. It's New York City Health from the government. And um, what they're talking about here is this group A strep. And it's a bacteria commonly found throat and skin. Vast majority of group A infections are mild illnesses, very short and quick, such as strep throat, impetigo. Occasionally, however, the bacteria can cause much more severe and even life-threatening diseases such as necrotizing fasciitis, exactly what we've been talking about, which is this flesh-eating bacteria. Now, what is invasive group A streptococcal disease? It's when it breaks through your barrier, basically. How common is it? Well, it only happens to so many. How are group A spread? Now, here's the key. How does invasive group A streptococcal disease occur? What's it all about? Invasive group A strep, infections occur when a bacteria gets past the defenses of the person who is infected. What's the defenses? The immune fil fabric highway there. All right. Okay, like I said, this is just nothing more than a, a paper. Hold on, I'm going to come back to this in a second. 
but this is nothing more than a paper written by New York City Health Department about streptococcus A and how the whole thing, all about it. And again, I don't give any medical advice, so I'm not saying this is right or wrong or, or anything, but I am saying this. They're talking about close contacts of individuals with invasive group A streptococcal disease. So you would think if you were close contact with a person that had this serious disease, you might get that serious disease. That doesn't happen. It says there have been no reports of casual contacts like co-workers or schoolmates developing invasive group A strep disease following contact with a person who developed invasive group A strep disease. You would expect some of them to get it. There's no, 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 nobody gets it based on being next to somebody that's got it. You may get a little this or that, but you're not going to get that invasive one because your immune system is working and the other one isn't. And it, it, here's even better. It says, rarely However, close contacts such as family members have developed invasive group A strep disease. That's because they're saying they're just more closely contacted. No, they're not. That's because they have the same eating habits, the same water, the same whatever, and the same basic bacteria. So they don't have the right bacteria in them. That's the way I see it. And again, this is just, just research. But you've got to think about these things. Okay, I can't think of any much more that I can tell you about this other than all the things we talked about. And I believe that they need to take more account of the bacteria because the bacteria create the enzymes. You don't have the bacteria, you don't get the enzymes. Basically simple as that. The enzymes do those jobs instantly to fight off invasion and to break down foods to get the correct nutrients. You need both of those things happening. And then you also need the correct bacteria to take out the waste. If you're not removing the waste with certain types of bacteria, certain types of bacteria consume waste, bring them over to the lymph nodes and so forth, dump them off, and come back and get some more. Now, if they don't clean up that waste, sooner or later that gets toxic. Other bacteria make, make ribosomes, which are the ones that, that are programmed, literally programmed, to attack invaders and they're also programmed to break down fats and carbohydrates and sugars and all that stuff and they're also products of different organs in your body these are enzymes enzymes do so much chemistry so quick it's beyond human belief millions of times per second faster than would happen if it wasn't was exposed to that catalyst, that enzyme. And the only way you get the enzyme is from the bacteria. And once the bacteria is dead, you're not going to get the enzyme. Now, a lot of people have taken a lot of antibiotics, I think, for, you know, rightfully so, to kill a lot of these invasive things that have been getting into people. And they're taking antibiotics to kill the biotic things that are coming into you. But at the same time, some of those antibiotics may be damaging some of your probiotics. So the real way out of it is to replace all those good probiotics after you wipe out the, the bad biotics in your body. Because they may not come back very well. And if they don't come back, you're going to be missing all kinds of things. And, and that could be leading to long COVID and things like that. It's just a change in the bacterial microbiome because almost all of those diseases are linked with nausea, gut distress, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, gas, all of that stuff is a product of digestion. Digestion, that, that digestion is like everything. It's Imagine. literally everything. Oh, I'm sorry.